Hello, Shockwave enthusiasts. It's Paul Hoborough here, and I'm going to talk frozen shoulder and the use of these two pieces of equipment. So many of you will only have the radial device. Now, what you want to think is about how you're going to use the applicator head. So first of all, let's think about where we're going to treat. We're going to treat the anterior shoulder perpendicular to the tissues. We're going to treat the lateral shoulder perpendicular to the tissues and we're going to come up into the high auxilla so not directly into the armpit high auxilla there so we can bathe all the different areas but you're not going to do very well with this d20 which is the oscillating head this predominantly is for muscle usage what you want is probably the standard r15 could maybe go for the deep impact the d15 if you've got a patient who's got a lot of muscle tissue but we want to begin to the anterior shoulder let's say for argument's sake 800 to a thousand shots you want to go lateral shoulder same and the same again up into the high auxilla there you're trying to bathe that ball and socket joint what happens in frozen shoulder is that the capsule that group of of um, fascia and conjoined tendons that create that loop, that, that sort of baggy plastic bag around the ball and socket joint gets adhered to somewhere in the joint. Now, if you can figure out where that is, you can treat that specifically. But my view is, let's just scatter blast the whole thing so you know you've got the whole treatment done. Now, you can choose to work across the traps um, supraspinatus, infraspinatus particularly. Now you might think I'm treating muscles so I'm going to use the oscillating D20. If you want to make someone cough a lot then that's the one to use. Stick with your standard R15 applicator when you're working over these muscles because it's going to reduce down <coughs> the feeling of the person need to cough because there's less vibration. You're still going to get a great treatment, it's just going to take you marginally longer, not much at all but stick with that. Now, if you've got the focus device, then you're gonna work on the same places and you're probably gonna need about 500 shocks in each place, yeah? You're gonna use this standoff unless the person has got a lot of muscle tissue or adipose tissue, in which case you're gonna to drop to this one. If the really, really large person um, you might want to take off the applicators altogether. But again, working in those same three places, but then still going to your radial if you've got it and doing all that work over the rotator cuff muscles. You can even come in to pec minor up here, top of pec major, and actually work into the anterior shoulder there. So when you combine those two together and make a great resolution for frozen shoulder. I think it's the paper by Hussein in 2015 that really started looking at how radial pressure wave was gonna be effective at treating frozen shoulder. Now, if you've also got the ENTT machine, then that's a great addition. Again, I start off with that first and with a frozen shoulder, then finish with it. So you do 4,000 pulses on level eight at eight hertz before you start doing this and then you do it again after just to settle everything down, calm it down. And then the exercise of choice is trying to get them to do this. Why? Because we've got abduction, we've got external rotation and extension all happening in one movement. So if you can get your patient to work on doing this type of exercise, then that really helps. You must know that if you don't have external rotation, you can't have abduction. So work on getting external rotation if they can't do that. And just a few degrees of external rotation is gonna change everything for your patients. Catch them as early as you can, stage one or freezing. Don't wait until it's frozen or stage two. Try and get into these people as quickly as possible. Accurate diagnosis. If the patient has a lot of external rotation, it probably isn't frozen shoulder. Keep going, guys.